Um, I've been working in this space, as I mentioned a moment ago, for eight years on plus and probably seven years before that. Um, I have to admit, I am a photographer <laughs> and um, was very concerned um, by uh, the fact that technology, while being in use um, in the creation of images, uh, really left the distribution of images behind in a great way, or the distribution of image information behind, unlike most other types of products out there, um, whether, whether books or, or music, other kinds of media, or just products in general, the information for images tends to get uh, separated from the images themselves, and, and I saw this as a tremendous issue. I also am a professor at the Art Center College of Design, where I teach um, intellectual property law and licensing practice and saw that my students would not have very much of a future unless something was done and um, continued a conversation that was already ongoing between publishers, designers, ad agencies, uh, museums, libraries, universities about addressing uh, this issue. Now um, earlier it was said that um, you need to solve what you can solve and not try and take too much on and I, and, and I would agree with that. Um, what we've done at PLUS is take a very huge uh, problem and approach it methodically, step by step, um, releasing bits of it as we go because they're in great demand. But our end game is to connect images to rights holders and rights information um, on, a, on a very significant scale. It's very easy from within any one industry or in fact any one company or just sitting at your desk to think of things that would be great to solve. Um, for example, I, uh, let's say I'm sitting at a desk and I have a problem with um, communicating uh, rights information on very specific types of licenses only in my company and only in my industry. If that's solved, my day is easier. But if I look up and look at the horizon, the problems that are on the way, if the greater underlying issues are not solved, are huge. And so PLUS is about um, focusing on the horizon and solving the problems that are coming at you, similar to um, you're, you're wading into the water in the ocean, it feels kind of cold, you're worried about the cold, and then you look up and there's a tidal wave at the last second. That, that, that's what's going on here, and, if, and we felt back in 2004 that if uh, we didn't bring all the industries together and, and attempt to resolve this issue over time, uh, that it would, it would just be devastating. So initially, uh, we approached many standards bodies, including um, uh, IPTC uh, invited everybody to the table and said we're only going to focus on one thing and that is just the communication and management of image rights. So that's what we do. Our mission statement is to simplify and facilitate the communication and management of image rights and we pull together all the industries that are involved in images in any which way whether creating or owning or using or preserving. It's a nonprofit organization uh, entirely neutral on, all, on any kind of legislation. Um, we don't uh, support um, or promote broad licensing or narrow licensing or expensive licensing or free licensing. It's just about the communication of rights information. Uh, we have participants in 94 countries now. The original standards were built by 2,000 volunteers in 34 countries. And these are the groups that are participating in PLUS and have participated in PLUS all along. It's a very diverse group. Uh, typically, um, these different parties don't uh, get along and collaborate very much, even within their own industries, but um, we have one rule at PLUS, and that's you leave, that is you leave your baggage at the door, and we come in and we talk about what does the word brochure mean? Can we please come up with a definition for brochure? <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, in terms of our relationship with IPTC, we're in our seventh year, probably eighth year now. IPTC is a founding member of PLUS, and we collaborate closely on all aspects of standard development uh, related to images. Um, in fact, IPTC has adopted uh, numerous properties from within the PLUS standards into the IPTC extension. Um, the PLUS registry will support um, both IPTC IIM and IPTC um, uh, extension. And um, PLUS, of course, participates on numerous IPTC committees and, and in the Embedded manifesto, Metadata Manifesto Initiative. We're also collaborating with dozens of initiatives around the world in various countries and regions. These are just some examples. Um, Link Content Coalition, Andrew Farrow is a speaker later today um, who's working on that. Um, we have a statement of collaboration with Creative Commons to express Creative Commons licenses in a machine interpretable way. Um, we are participating in the Copyright Hub project in the UK. 
Uh, we've been working with ODRL from the very beginnings of PLUS, and ODRL helped, to, helped us to form the PLUS standards. Right now we're helping them on adapting ODRL 2.0 to be able to more accurately express image rights. IDER is an entertainment industry uh, registry. We're working with them. ID Alliance as well. Ad ID is an advertising industry association. Uh, VRA, of course, VRA Core is a, is a metadata schema and many other things. And then Adobe was the first um, sponsor or, or uh, they, they provided our first funding. In, in fact, when they wrote us the first check, we had to go create the nonprofit organization in order to be able to deposit the check in a bank account and get, and, and get to work. So um, we, we've been working with Adobe for quite a long time. So users communicate rights um, before, during, and after a license transaction. And many photographers and picture libraries, mostly picture libraries, are very focused on search aspects, allowing uh, customers to find images, of course, because you've got to bring the customer in and make it easy to find an image, and then easy to have a transaction. But after that point, uh, many um, sellers, uh, photographers, picture libraries, et cetera, um, stop. And they're not so, so much concerned with what goes on after the moment of the transaction other than delivering an invoice and receiving payment, um, making sure that the information is available, accessible, understandable, usable by clients has not been a primary concern. And in some ways, that's driven a lot of the issues that we have today. We do all of these things in communicating rights, um, not just licensing them, but offering to license, um, seeking rights, researching rights, granting rights, acquiring rights, asserting rights, and then those two in red are, are, have been pretty much ignored in terms of when the user uses rights, how can we help them to make sure that they can automate that process of using the rights and manage those rights effectively so that they can um, Effect, uh, so that they can leverage the rights that they have and avoid accidental infringement, decrease cost, decrease resources, um, decrease liability. All of these things have to be frictionless. We pulled together this organization as a coalition of parties that are very interested only in, in, uh, in collaborating on this one thing. We set all other, all other topics aside, and because of that, we're able to focus on creating standards and a registry that we'll talk about later that enables access to the to, to dynamic rights information. But in doing so, we, have, we are covering all the bases. Any time that you want to communicate rights for any reason, uh, we're, we are attempting to cover all those bases, but we're doing it over time, taking one step at a time and providing certain levels of functionality as we go. The licenses can be, um, or, or should be, uh, able to be expressed by and between any types of parties in any and all industries, in any and all regions, any kind of use case or scenario, whether assignment photography, illustration, any kind of uh, visual artist, um, picture libraries, stock, everything, and under any and all license models, granted at any and all time. So in developing a standard, certainly there, has been, there have been licenses issued in the past, there's licenses being issued today, under whatever models have been in practice. So what PLUS has done is go out to the community, where the community has joined forces at PLUS, and brought forth all of their past licensing practices, their present licensing practices, and use cases for what they feel that their future licensing practices will be, and we've designed the PLUS standards around that. Standards need to support all uh, models of licensing, as I mentioned a moment ago. And currently, if you take a look around, you see rights managed as a uh, licensing model that is not as frequently used as royalty-free licensing, which is, uh, ha has many flavors to it, of course. Creative Commons licensing, very popular. Then industry-specific types of image licensing, say, uh, in the news industry, between parties that have agreements between themselves, they have very particular ways of licensing that you don't see outside of the news industry. And then all types of future licensing models, such as licensing by impressions or clicks or whatever it might be. Um, a, a rights expression language for images should be able to express any type of rights under any type of license. So when I say machine readable, I really mean m machine interpretable. But when I mentioned that to Michael, he said, I think that'll just be a little confusing if we start <laughs> using machine interpretable and machine readable and call the day machine interpretable rights, and I would tend to agree. So wherever you see machine readable here, I'm really meaning machine interpretable. And the question becomes, to what extent? Because I have yet to see an image license that is truly and completely machine interpretable. There's always some kind of reference to some terms and conditions 
that are not stated um, in, in, in the language that point off to some agreement between the parties that's not expressed in the rights expression statement. So you just have to look at where the failure point is, and that's the point at which the rights cease to be uh, machine interpretable within uh, the expression of, a, of, a, of licensed rights. The, and there is always a f one of those failure points, and the goal is to make the license as machine interpretable as possible, to take it as far as you can go before somebody has to refer to information that is not available through the expression. So when, when you go out to industry and look at how image licenses are taking place, they're somewhat different than text and music licenses. Certainly there's common threads that you'll recognize here. Um, you know, in royalty-free licensing, um, well, I'll get to that in a moment, but in royalty-free licensing, you have any quantity, any versions, any placement, any duration, any regions, et cetera. Um, in rights managed license, you have some flavor of this, and perhaps most of, the, most of these are unlimited when they're licensed these days, but some of them do have limitations. But when you look at the whole universe of image licensing, these are the parameters that you find, and you don't find many others. Now, these are the primary parameters. There are other duties, um, uh, um, uh, duties and prohibitions, et cetera, but these are the primary. Then you find other prohibitions and duties like these. Uh, which I'm not going to get into every one of them, everything from um, uh, disclosing a, a, a minor model in the image to requiring a credit line or a content warning. And if you take a look at royalty-free, which some people just say, well, this is a more simple form of licensing, and certainly it's more simple to acquire. But royalty-free licenses, when you look under the covers, are one of the most complex types of licenses to manage on the planet. So if you look at, this is just pulled out of um, Getty Images, uh, royalty-free um, right, uh, permissions, duties. These are all, all this is a whole other page of them. May not be juxtaposed with pornographic material, not transferable, not sublicensable, uh, may not be used in, uh, uh, for on-demand products. Uh, most users are not aware of this, and these uh, prohibitions are not commonly enforced, but they do all exist and they would need to be expressed if you're expressing a royalty-free license. A whole nother page of them. In developing the PLUS standards, we had to accommodate all different types of licensing and also, again, looking to the horizon to make sure that we cover those. So we pulled together volunteers, about 2,000 volunteers, as I mentioned, from 34 countries and set about building a lexicon, which is our PLUS licensing glossary. We call it that for public consumption. but. Uh, the first version has 1,500 words with definitions, synonyms, antonyms, um, uh, notes about the use of the words, and one by one we went through with the publishers, the ad agencies, the design firms, the museums, the photographers and illustrators, etc. What does this word mean to you? And we developed an online standards review system where they could go in and examine the definitions for all these words, make comments. We had standards editors in. We, 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 took, we set aside about four years to do it, and we did it in three for the first version, and right now we're working on the, the next update with another thousand terms. And again, this is not a standard that's developed by any particular industry. This is the, literally the, the creators and, co and content owners working with their clients to, to make sure that you can arrive at a definition for uh, a, a term that might show up in a license. After we went through and did that, we assigned I identifiers to every type of term so that you can have precise translations from language to language, because we do work in a global marketplace. And the entire PLUS standards, all of them, are extensible because licensing is evolving as I'm standing here. This is the first set of PLUS standards developed over a six-year period from the PLUS glossary, which I just mentioned, to the PLUS matrix, which is a hierarchy of all the different types of media with identifiers assigned to each, uh, to PLUS packs, a schema, which is the PLUS license data format. That's one way of expressing uh, uh, PLUS rights. You can also express them in ODRL, XRML, um, XMP, of course. That's, that's the PLUS license data format expression. We also have a media summary code. Earlier today, there was a suggestion that people needed a, a way to easily paste something into a field, in a, in, in, in a, into a metadata field that could express what the usage is. That's what that is. And I'll show you that very briefly in just a moment. And then identifiers for parties, assets, and documents. We use handle IDs, global, unique, persistent, and with multi-resolution. So here's an example, uh, 
wrapping up, here's an example of uh, what we call the plus media summary code. I'm just grabbing this out of a hat because there's many other things to show you, but I don't have time. That statement at the top has a four character, um, uh, what we call a matrix ID for each different aspect of the use. You can string multiple usages together. Um, here's a very simple uh, royalty-free type license, any usage, all versions, any quantity, in perpetuity, any industries, all languages, non-exclusive. Um, it can be expressed like that. If you are a book publisher and you need to get um, rights from multiple different vendors, you can give them that code and all, all of your vendors will give you the exact rights that you're looking for. If you want to put that code into your image files, um, somebody could decode it th either through our API or through one of the applications that offers post functionality and would see the rights that are associated with it. But it's not just for simple type licenses. There's a longer code that has uh, probably eight different usages in it. Uh, there's, okay, eight usages. There's usage A, which this is a typical book textbook license where the, you have different numbers, different duration, different quantity, different types of media. In a textbook, you would need um, ancillary materials, web use, advertising use, everything like a bundle of rights. So usage A, then usage B is an ebook. You should see this is all part of one license with multiple usages in incorporated in it. And this, I just skipped to H to give you an idea of what's going on there. What we're doing right now is developing uh, the Plus Standards version 2.0. We're working with ODRL, as I mentioned. Uh, working with the Link Content Coalition, a very important initiative so that rights can be communicated across all different types of media. Um, assisting stakeholders with PLUS integration. PLUS is starting to appear in all types of applications. And then developing and testing the PLUS registry, which we'll talk a little bit about later today. Thank you very much.